Well, it's a new year. It's the 2nd of January today, and I thought it might be a, an idea to take a little video of the workshop here, um, because we will not be here next year. We have got to move. Oh my God. Um, right, I'm just uh, wandering out my little mezzanine office. And you know, it's about time we moved really, but it's going to be such a mission. Um, so yeah, a general view of the space and the rubbish that uh, is contained within it. Well, not rubbish really, but um, well, a, there is a lot of rubbish. But there's some uh, useful machines. Let's have a quick look around here, and I will. Um, uh, mad sculpture that a friend of mine put together, which has got to be found a home for. This was going to go. Well, he had an idea where it was going to go, and it didn't happen. But uh, we've got three months to get out of here, um, and we've got to make a decision on what stuff we take and what stuff we get rid of. Let's see if I can come down these stairs without falling over or dropping the camera. Old Colchester student, which might have to go. I think it probably will. There's a minimalist stairs that I just walked down in my little office up, up there. Smart and brown lathe, which I really, really like and I want to keep. And here we're into our fly press section. And we've got rather more fly presses than we need. A couple of pillar drills. Little old Atlas lathe. First thing I uh, used to make stuff with for sale. Um, yeah, it's been good. Um, we'll find a home for that, I'm sure. More fly presses. Whoa. Power press. Little eight, uh, six ton HME power press, which legally we're not allowed to use, hence the sign on it says do not use. Um, rules and regulations are laws in the UK about using power presses, and they have to be inspected by qualified people. Um, and once every couple of years, that entails taking the flywheel off and inspecting the clutch mechanism. And the cost of doing that is more than the worth of the work that we use it for. So um, we actually use this manually. You can just grab the flywheel and use it as kind of a horizontal fly press, if you like. Still got our uh, little guillotine hook set up on it. Articulated arm drill. Handy. Um, set up at the moment just for doing one particular job, hence the adjustable um, the adjustable vice on it, so we can move things into position with reasonable accuracy. So I'm not sure whether we'll be keeping that. I, I think we will, but I don't know. Viola capstan, which we use, as you can see, with all the swarf on it, we make use of that. So we've got to take that with us. Little Colchester Bantam, which was a production lathe for years. Um, and then we got a CNC, and this thing kind of fell into disuse. 
and this was one of the machines that I've been thinking for ages, we might as well sell it on. And then lo and behold, when we had problems with the CNC, we had to fall back on this. Um, so yeah, we might be hanging on to it, don't know. Henry Milne's Mill. Really solid machine. Very noisy. We've never done any maintenance on it. It's um, got a single phase motor in it. 13 amp plug on the end of the, of the lead. Um, that may well be going. Heavy duty spot welder. Um, again, something we've hardly used. We used to, once upon a time, use it for uh, putting weld nuts onto these pressed brackets so fast. If you've got thousands to do it, it's the way to do it. But yeah, we haven't used that for ages. Now into our polishing come TIG welding shop, which is not really a very sensible combination, but uh, yeah, it happened because when we moved here 20 plus years ago, the guy who did the polishing was the only guy who knew how to do TIG welding, so uh, the TIG welder just moved into the same space as a polishing spindle. We have a, this is a three horsepower and this little one, which has hardly been used, so this will probably be up for sale. This is only a one horsepower. For proper industrial, well, industrial, you know, production work, it's not powerful enough. For home use, it would be great. And I did have it at home. Um, single phase, again. So that's a handy little thing to have. That will probably be up for sale. A big old Hobart beta wave TIG welder. Really, really good machine. That's staying. This is an Edwards surface table. It's a bit beat up. It cost me, I think, I think I paid 30 quid at an auction for it. Um, and it was an absolute mission to move the darn thing. Um, we've got a portable polisher under there, which we've never used. So that's probably something to sell. But storage, various tools, drills. Yeah, that's mostly drills, a few spanners and stuff at the bottom. You know, it would be a really good thing to move and get a bit reorganised. Another little fly press, mostly used for stamping part numbers on things. Oh, some more drills, drill presses, nice little arbor press. Router spindle, upside down, routers underneath, cutter pokes through the table. Um, do a couple of jobs on that. Not used for ages. An automatic pneumatic double drilling setup up there, the part that we used to make. And kind of one of Sod's laws. You you look at stuff that you haven't used for ages, you think, yeah, oh, we'll get rid of that. And then lo and behold, someone will come along and say, oh, you know those things you used to make for us, this whatever. <laughs> Can you do some more? And, uh, yeah, stuff we didn't use for ages, so we, we needed. A uh, little Centec mill, which has been set up just for doing one job that we used to do hundreds of. Um, and this would be the thing I was just talking about a little while ago. Oh, can you do, do another 300 of those bits? They'll probably be 300 for the next year. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what's happening to that. What do, we, do we keep it? We could do, this is actually quite a good production machine because you've got this quick acting handle on it. Um, 
And although we could do this on a bigger horizontal, it's very convenient to just do the job on that. Shop task machine. Oh. Made in China, it came to us with a US spec, so it had 110 volt motors on it. It's supposed to have another motor up the top, something comes along here, hangs over, so it's a, an all-in-one lathe and milling machine. That's probably going to go. That spindle belongs to the Centec, really, and the job that we use it for can go on another machine. And the other machine I'm thinking of is the Stein Steinel, which has got a slotting head set up on it at the minute. But, um, yeah, it's a handy machine. We quite often use the horizontal arbor, slitting saws and various cutters on it for certain jobs. So that's got to stay. We have an old pantograph engraving machine. I think we've got a home for that. We hardly use it, but, um, yeah. That won't be coming with us, but we'll have a home for that. And this is a lapping machine. I think I might do, if I can find the time, have a closer look at some of these machines. That particular device is a bit unusual. don't see those very often. We used to use it as a pre-finishing um, process before certain parts were polished. Haven't used it for years. So that's got to go. Um, a quick look, this is our MIG welding shop. Two and a half by one and a quarter meter table, eight by four. Um, homemade affair. It's a handy thing to have. We started doing gates and railings and stuff and we needed somewhere to do it. So that's this used to be our office. So the office got moved, it's a little mess. And this became our MIG welding shop. Um, little Murex welder which packed up donkeys years ago and I thought oh, I might be able to get it one fixed one of these days never did so I just pulled that out of the corner that will probably be scrapped that's our main MIG welder a fairly basic Murex trades MIG um, about the biggest you can get that still runs on a 13 amp plug I think it probably should have 16 amp yeah, you don't get 16 amp 3 pin plugs, so it's got a 13 amp plug on it, and that's been fine, and that does most of our MIG work. I also got this old Fronius uh, Synergic Transpulse machine, which we use for aluminium and MIG brazing. So that's got to come with us, that's a handy thing to have. Then back to where are we? Our saws don't have a big cut off band saw. I like the rotary pull down chop saw, and I quite like this because it's got self centering double sided vice on it. So I like to keep that. And we've got the drill next to it because it's really convenient to have quite often if you're cutting long lengths of angle or box section you'll want to put holes in it so we can cut it to length and then feed it through and um, drill it. I don't know why that's at an angle that was uh, yeah it's not usually like that. We've also got an old power hacksaw down there See if I can brighten things up a bit, get a bit, bit of a better view on that. Um, hardly gets used. It's only occasionally when you've got, I don't know, a four inch diameter bar of steel or something that you want to cut and you can just chuck it in there and switch it on and let it get on with it. Um, 
not something we do a lot of, really. And quite often, if I need a chunk of steel, I'll just order a chunk of steel in from the supplier. I'll just get a billet in, or two, or three, or however many we need. Little grinder. Um, the band side of it is what we use mostly for deburring stuff that's just been cut on the saw. I have another little spot welding machine, single phase again. Um, yeah, the other one that I showed you is a three phase thing, water cooling. This is a basic affair. Kind of a, a supportable one that's been mounted on a, on a stand. And it has, has a foot pedal on it. You can kind of see that it's not in easily, <laughs> easily, um, it's not easily used. Um, but it is a useful thing, it does occasionally get used. So we'll probably find a home for that wherever we go. Um, aluminium chop saw, brilliant thing. Um, if we cut an aluminium, it gets cut on here so much faster. It's got the it's a woodworking machine, but it's got an aluminium blade on it, or aluminium cutting blade. And, yeah, we had a little incident with this. We need to, we've bent some fences on it, so we need to get some new fences for that sorted out. But, yeah, I, I need to keep this. Just there we have... Vertical band saw, very handy machine. Um, there's a possibility that we be, will be moving in with somebody else who's already got a band saw, so that might be up for sale. Quick whiz round here, storage we have a little treadle, treadle guillotine. Um, handy thing, except that it's only three foot, and with a lot of sheet materials coming in, a, two by one meters that don't fit on here um, good for little bits but for truing sheet oh, sometimes a bit of a pain I don't know whether that's coming coming with us maybe not and this folding machine Edwards folding machine I'll clear some crap out of the way of this and uh, take a closer look at that Interesting machine, probably not going to keep it. And another one of those things that we think, oh, we hardly ever use it, we might as well get rid of it. It's a set of bending rolls. And lo and behold, I've got a job that I'm doing on it. Um, it's really meant for rolling sheet metal. This is a 50 by 3 flat bar, which is coping with OK. Um, but yeah, we'll, we've got other means, I think, available to do this sort of stuff. So this will probably be going. Ketona bending rolls. And then over here, we have surface grinder. That's all manual. Um, may or may not be keeping that, not sure. Depends whether, uh, yeah, what's available, where we move to. Um, so yeah, that might be going. Colchester Triumph, very very handy lathe. Um, done quite a few videos of stuff, work that's gone on, and work that's been done on this. And then here, our little dabble into the 20th century. Yeah, 20th century. <laughs> this is a 1988, 88, I think so. Hard inch talent, CNC, two axis, turning centre. Um, when it's working, it's great for the work that we do with it. It's a bit temperamental, doesn't like hot or cold weather, but um, yeah, that's got to come. We've got to find space for that. Workbench in need of a real good clear up. You know, since, I've, uh, since we've known that we've got to move, I've tended to think, oh, I won't bother clearing up because we're going to have to really have a clear up um, when we come to move and there'll be so much stuff that we're going to have to chuck out. 
Um, and it would be good to get reorganised, I hope. Uh, must be chunky vice, a couple of drill presses, offhand grinder, uh, back of one of our fly presses, and there's the atlas over there. And then in the corner, our old beaver turret mill, which is really, really worn out, but has been good for the past 20 years. Always intended to uh, get something better, but never come across anything at the right moment. So this has stayed stayed there, and for a lot of the work that we do, it does a really good job. We've got here a little took table, capstan attachment for the turret lathe. We have used it occasionally, so I dare say we'll keep that just in case a job comes along that would be good to be done with the turret. And an old really drill grinder which is really really worn out and uh, it's broken in a couple of places and yeah I think I'll probably get thrown away so I think that covers about everything at the moment oh my god what a mm. yes Come through here again, back to the flyer presses, and see our metal racking in the back there. With some sacks of swarf, we're overrun with sacks of swarf at the moment. That's all going to go before we go. Um, and yeah, I might have a good, a bit of a clear, clear out, tidy up and have a closer look at some of these machines. One last scan of the place. Walking backwards, tripping over stuff. So, 2023, big changes afoot.